Last year's forest fires in Mexico were particularly destructive. Authorities say firefighters took on more than 8,000 of them and that over 4 million acres were burned. This year, forestry officials are using a newer tool to give charred areas a helping hand in recovering. They're employing drones. This has been done before in Canada. Sometimes it's not practical or possible for workers to reach places that have burned and to replace trees the old fashioned way by planting them. By loading drones with seeds, and these machines can carry up to 44 pounds of them, officials are able to fly over remote areas and spread the seeds more efficiently than people can. Because vegetation has burned off, there are fewer obstacles to keep the seeds from reaching the ground, so foresters expect a significant germination rate. It's one way they're hoping to replace trees in the ground by taking to the air. Hi, I'm Carl Azus, and you know what? Wednesdays are mid. Thanks for sharing part of your Wednesday with us on The World from A to Z. A project in Europe has injected its first shipment of liquid carbon dioxide into the ground beneath the North Sea. Here's why this is significant. When manufacturers produce steel, concrete, and a range of other materials people commonly use, they give off CO2, sometimes funneled through smokestacks into the air. In an effort to prevent this from having a harmful environmental impact, three oil companies have gotten together for a project called Northern Lights. What they do is collect carbon dioxide from smokestacks in Europe. They turn that into liquid and put it into storage tanks, and then they push it through a long pipeline to a reservoir located more than a mile and a half underground beneath the seabed of the North Sea. This is an example of carbon capture technology, and it's expensive. The Northern Lights project is partially funded by the nation of Norway. And though the United Nations supports carbon capture as a climate tool, critics say it still keeps people dependent on fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, and that the money and efforts for carbon capture technology should be spent on sustainable energy development like wind, solar, and hydropower. The Northern Lights Project is a commercial effort with plans to expand significantly in the years ahead. Word of knowledge. Which of these state capitals is located the farthest south? Phoenix, Arizona, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Little Rock, Arkansas, Atlanta, Georgia. While the southernmost state capital in the country is Honolulu, Hawaii, the southernmost one on this list is Phoenix, Arizona. A sight straight out of a movie. A towering cloud of dust swallowing up parts of Phoenix. Can't see anything. Drivers stopped as their cars were surrounded. State and weather agencies warning drivers to proceed with caution as the storm made visibility dangerously low. We can, we can see a little bit in front of us. I think there's a car behind us. For about an hour, planes at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport couldn't take off or land due to a ground stop. Severe thunderstorms followed, leaving behind downed trees, wind damage, and widespread power outages. Hearing the trees crack and stuff, this one felt like it was fast but devastating at the same time. The intense dust storm swept through Arizona Monday night. Look at this thing. I just got the warning like 10 minutes ago. These types of storms are nothing new in Arizona's monsoon season, but this one packed an extra punch when the thunderstorm collapsed, blasting winds outward, scooping up desert soil and building it into a rolling wall of dust, which can climb thousands of feet high and stretch for miles. And the southwest monsoon pattern isn't done yet. Phoenix could see more thunderstorms into Wednesday. On this date in world history. Before August 27, 1859, there were two main ways to get oil. By whaling, which was expensive and time consuming, and through seeps, places where oil naturally seeped through the ground but only provided a little at a time. That changed when an American named Edwin L. Drake used an iron pipe in a Pennsylvania well. That pipe protected the well from flooding or collapsing, and when oil rose up through it, Drake's folly became Drake's success and led to America's first oil boom. On this date in 1955, a certain book of world records was bound for the first time. The Guinness Book, which has by now gathered tens of thousands of records, has been published in dozens of languages and become one of the best-selling books in history. 
And on August 27th, 2003, Mars did something it had never done before in human history. Scientists said it made its closest approach to Earth in almost 60,000 years. How close was it? About 35 million miles away, which in astronomical terms is like the dude sitting next to you. Anyway, it gave telescopes an incredible opportunity to get some serious close-ups with the red planet. Where in the world? This nation is believed to have been the birthplace of the guitar. Once conquered by Muslim Arabs, the country became independent in 1492. Today, it's a parliamentary constitutional monarchy whose capital is Madrid. This is Spain, a country of more than 42 million people. When flash floods hit the Valencia region in Spain last October, more than 220 people died. Entire towns were plastered in mud and debris, and countless buildings were damaged. People there lost many, maybe even all, of their possessions, including things that could not be replaced, like photos. Photographs might be somebody's last tangible link to old memories, or maybe a last glimpse at a relative who's died. Nos reconocemos en we recognize ourselves in these photos. That one could be our child. These could be our parents on their wedding day. I believe this makes them cultural artifacts. Now, photography students from Valencia's Polytechnic University are restoring photos damaged in the floods. They sifted through wreckage for pictures belonging to those who survived the disaster and bicycled about town, putting up posters and spreading the word that people can turn in soiled photos and see what could be saved. Water stained and covered in mud, some photos and slides look almost like abstract art. Neon pinks, yellows, and blues have replaced the faded browns and sepia of old photo albums. Many are difficult to decipher, but the outlines of faces and memories remain, even in the most damaged pieces. The restoration process begins with volunteers cataloging each picture, taking photos of them and making a record of how each was arranged in an album. Next, the photos are cleaned in shallow bins of water before being hung to dry and mounted on a special paper. Then a digital copy is made. The project is entering its second phase now, where students will use artificial intelligence to help restore the damaged images. Isabel Cordero is one Valencia resident who lost all her possessions in the flood but she did salvage a large brown paper bag full of old photos, and the students were able to clean them. Would have been a shame to lose it. Many thanks, truly, many thanks. Over 230,000 photos and 1,800 albums have poured in, and project organizers hope to restore every photo by the one-year anniversary of the floods. But if more people bring in more photos and albums to restore, the students say they won't turn them away. We've announced viewers in 20 different states so far this season. This will make it 23. First stops in the Beehive State of Utah. Mr. Folk's class is there, watching from Career Tech High School. It's in the city of St. George. Moving east, we want to say hello to Mr. Wakeman and the students of St. Bridget Catholic School. The Knights are in Midland, Michigan. And from Camden, North Carolina, we've got the Cubs with us from Mrs. Dupree's class. Great to have Camden Middle School watching the world from A to Z. We ought to have an Only in Florida segment because this story would be perfect. When an alligator, and thankfully not a fully grown one, camped out in a Florida pool, a deputy who obviously grew up in the area used his bare hands to wrangle the rascally reptile. It obviously wasn't happy with how things were handled. I know. You're so angry. But the animal got a free ride and a safe one at that with its seatbelt buckled over to a nearby pond. It's true pool sharks are favored over pool gators. Maybe they're not all snout to get us. Maybe they just want a pool that's worth its salt. A quiet place they can smile about. Crocodile up some relaxation and rep tell their friends, come on in, the water's great. That said, if I had a pool and one of those wanted to get chlor into it, I'd say, see you later. I'm Coral Azus for The World from A to Z. Thanks again for watching this Wednesday. You mean the world to me.